iced coffee today. As you may be able to tell, it's a bit warm. <laughs> I'm actually filming outside because it's so hot in the house. It is 10 a.m. and it's already 28 degrees and it's crazy hot. It's crazy hot. Hottest day of the year so far. Um, possibly the hottest day of the year, period. It's supposed to go up to about 32. <laughs> um, most of the morning it's been quite cloudy but the sun's just come out so thought I'd come and sit in the garden, chat to you guys. Um, kind of a vloggy, one book July beauty what's in my bag kind of thing. <laughs> I don't know. A lot of you asked what handbag I was using because I said, I think on Instagram the other day, that I had a new bag and it was just in time for One Book July because it was really small and I wouldn't be able to fit a lot into it. And of course everybody wanted to know what it was. So, let me grab it for you. It is, oh it's not done up, hang on. It is this. As you can tell, those of you who know your bags, it is the same style as the Chanel 2.5, but it is not a Chanel, okay? It's not even pretending to be a Chanel. It's a cheap one I got off eBay because I really liked it. Uh, it was, the reports were that it was really good quality. I liked the way it was made. I liked the fact that it was silver hardware instead of gold. And I love the chains. I love these chains on the Chanel bags. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to get one because there's no way in hell I'm ever going to afford the, the price of a 2.5. So why not treat myself to a little cheapy one? It'll do. So it's not very big. It's got the adjustable handle. So you can wear it as crossbody or over your shoulder or double shoulder. Uh, there's also a little trick you can do that where you loop the handles round underneath the flap and then you can turn it into like a a little briefcase type bag. It has the typical clasp on the front, obviously without the Chanel logo because it's not a Chanel. <laughs> it's not even a faux Chanel. It's just a cheapy one on eBay that looks like the same style. Uh, it's got the back pocket and all I've got in there at the moment is my headphones uh, because I put my headphones on and then I slip my it's a mobile phone pocket so I pop my mobile phone in here when I've got my headphones on so that I can carry my bag and listen to my headphones at the same time and it doesn't get all tangled up in stuff and it's a bit misshapen at the moment because I've got my spare battery for the camera in it uh, just because I've got nowhere else to put it that it's not going to get hot so Inside we have, um, the main compartment has a zip, but I don't zip it up, zips bug me. And then the front has a, a popper with a little slide pocket. So in the little, it's quite hard to do this actually, in the little slide pocket here I have my bagu, which is, for those of you who remember back in the 70s when kids had cagoules that used to do up into their own pocket. They were like little rain jackets that did up into their own pocket. This is a similar thing but it's a bag. <laughs> it's got a little pocket on the inside and the whole thing folds up and turns inside out and turns into its own little shopper bag. And it's really good because it has thick handles so it's like a proper carrier bag style bag but it's nylon so it's, it's pretty good. It's quite strong. And I also have in here my card case um, in the front here I usually have odd bits of paper this is um, I've got some business cards and a prescription and things like that uh, I also put paper money in there um, if I have coins usually I throw them in the bottom of my bag but if I've got like pound coins I put them in the front here uh, on the back there is another zipper and in there I have my cards, coffee cards, credit cards, a couple of store cards, my prescription card, just basics that I need. And then the main compartment usually has a bus ticket, yep, 
my current bus ticket and inside I don't know if you're going to be able to see this but inside there there's a key ring actually attached to the inside of the bag and I've got a little clip uh, like a, a lobster clip with a little piece of nylon attached to it with a little strap on it it's only about that big and I just clip my keys onto that and chuck my keys inside here so all of that card keys cash all of that fits in that pocket there so I don't have to keep faffing around taking my books in and out to get to my stuff so in the main compartment here I've got my one book July which is most of what's in there to be honest I'll come back to that in a minute what else have I got my phone it's a Sony Xperia I have my glasses my reading glasses now I don't I don't carry them in a case because it, it the case just bulks it up what I do is there's a a loop on the end of the zip so I just tuck it through there with the glasses facing the side of the bag so that they don't get scratched and then they're easy to get to again without having to undo the bag I've got a glue runner this is part of my one book July kit I've got a highlighter runner tape runner again part of my one book July kit and I've got a set of stamps which I'll come back to and a stamp pad again part of one book July I'll do that in a minute uh, I have my paper mate pen which is the one I tend to use for work I have my Nivea lip balm this is in soft rose it's one of those tinted ones with sunscreen it doesn't taste nasty like a lot of these Nivea ones they tend to taste like Vaseline but this one tastes of nothing really it just feels a bit greasy I have my ancient Rimmel Mirror Shine lip gloss in number 166 no chance this is my favorite color I love this lip gloss It tastes like black cherry. Mm. Ooh, getting dive bombed. I have oh another. I've got a lip lacquer. This is the Rimmel Apocalypse lip lacquer in 301 Galaxy. It's a very soft nude pink, uh, but it's got a little bit of sparkle in it. Quite like that. Oh, look, another lip. <laughs> I've got a, mat a matte Finity in number six, Paris, and it is matte. So it's almost the same colour as my Apocalypse, a little bit pinker, but it's completely matte, and it, it stays on forever. What I like to do is put a little bit of the, a little bit of this on as a stain, and then put my No Chance over the top, so it looks like a lip gloss, but it's more of a stain. It stays on all day. What else have I got? I've got my, whoops, <laughs> a black pencil <laughs> that's now on the floor. <laughs> I've got my um, perfume. It's a rollable perfume in Dragon's Blood scent. It, it basically smells like incense. Mm, it's amazing. I've been wearing this for years now. I love this scent. This is my everyday go-to. I've got perfumes that I wear if I'm going out, but this is my everyday go-to. Oh, there's the clip off my pen that I was looking for yesterday. Put that back on. Uh, and then in the back here, it's just got two little pockets. Uh, one of them's empty, and the other one I have my trusty Swiss Army knife that I don't leave home without. So that is what it's in my bag. And amazingly, all that fits. <laughs> I just chuck all this stuff in the bottom here. My glasses, like I say, I put on the clip at the end there. 
My phone is usually in my hand, but if it's not in my hand, I put it in this big pocket at the back, just so I know where it is. Oh, I put my pen knife back in already. And then I have my one book July bits and pieces, which just slot in. And then, obviously, that's it. That's my bag. So, oh, that's what's in my bag today. Well, at the moment. Let me just grab a bit of coffee. Oh, it's so hot. Mm. Iced coffee. I love iced coffee. Let's see if it's got... Oof. 28 degrees. 28! That's so hot. <laughs> oh. Oh yeah, what else can I tell you about before I... Oh, my sunscreen. I had quite a few people saying, because um, I said about it being really hot and with me being fair skinned and freckled and everything else, redhead. Uh, they asked what sunscreen I use. I use the Nivea Sun Kids Moisturising Sunscreen. It is 50 plus, very high. And it's funny because it comes out green. It's hilarious. <laughs> I assume that's for kids to um, I said it's in wasting it uh, I assume that's for kids to make it fun for them to put on I don't know but it's very water resistant it says and it's for delicate skin and I've got a lot of I'm quite sensitive to what I can put on my skin so I tend to go for the kids stuff and 50 plus is nice and high UVA, UVB protection and it smells lovely it smells really really nice I don't like that sunscreen smell that you get on holiday <laughs> around the pool but this smells really nice that is what's in my bag and yes I do take my sunscreen with me as well it just about fits I've got a little um, spray decanter that I take with me I just, you know, spray out or pour out a little bit into it and take it with me uh, rather than taking this massive bottle. Uh, but since I'm sitting in the garden, I didn't see the need to decant any. Okay, One Book July. <clears throat> this is my One Book July. This is what I've settled on. I've gone for my little black book and a blue Bic ballpoint. <gasps> I know. <laughs> I was sat drawing with this yesterday and I just, I don't know, there was something about it. I really liked it. I liked the colour. I liked the feel of it in my hand. I like how it wrote. I like how it drew. Uh, I loved the colour on the page and I thought, you know what, I'm going to, um, I'm going to use this formula with July because I'm, I'm digging it. So that's what I was drawing yesterday. And I also made a book list. This is all the books that I have on my audio book list, my audible list, that I haven't read yet. <laughs> and um, basically I've just got, you know, name, title and author. But I've also got, down the side, I've got tick boxes to show if I've started them. I've started the top one. Um, when I finished them, I finished a couple of the ones over here. I put them on the list because they were on my book, on my phone. And then I've got a number next to it, and that is how long the audiobook is. So that first one is 11 hours, and I've rounded it up to, sorry, 13 hours, and I've rounded it up to the nearest hour. So if, even if it was like 12 hours, 10 minutes, I've rounded it up to 13 minute hours so that it's just easier. Um, that way I know how long it is. Because I figure if I know I'm going to be doing something, you know, I'm just popping into town, I've only got three hours. I can listen to, I've got four or five books here that are like an hour or two hours or three hours. Some are even only half an hour because they're short stories. Or I've got books of short stories where I can listen to one at a time. So I thought that would be useful to put that on there as a reference. Um, and then I can have more than one audiobook going at the same time because I can get through some of the shorter ones when I've got time and I'm just popping into town and just doing a quick thing uh, and I can listen to the longer ones in the evenings before bed like I normally do. So, 
Yep, that's my book list. And then my One Book July setup. This is going to sound odd, but how can I explain it? Part of the thing for One Book July is to get back to basics to work out what you need. And one of the things that I've noticed, uh, and this is not a criticism, it's just an observation. Um, because the, the whole point of the challenge is that you interpret it however you like. So, you know, don't think, oh, well, Romani says I'm doing it wrong. Romani doesn't say anything of the sort. Romani is just pointing out an observation that she noticed. That as soon as you say to everybody, right, you're going to use one book, immediately they start deciding what they're going to need in that book. Now, I can understand uh, people new to the challenge doing that because uh, people did that last year. And to be fair, you know, Carrie does that. <laughs> uh, I do that. There are some of us who we just know that we need certain things. Like for me, I have to have a month spread. I have to be able to see my monthly calendar because that is where I put in, you know, I mark off days that I'm filming. I mark off days that I can't film because my flatmate's home. I mark off days that I'm away. I mark off appointments. Everything goes in that calendar. I don't have to have a weekly one. I don't have to have a daily one. I don't have to have anything else. But I do have to have my monthly calendar. I've always had a monthly calendar. I don't think I could function without one. Um, and on the rare occasions where I've tried, within a couple of days I've gone back to putting a calendar in because I'm just like, I can't function if I can't see the next 30 days. I need to know what's coming up. I can't figure out what I need to do today if I don't know what I'm going to be doing tomorrow because what I do today will depend entirely on what I do tomorrow. For instance, um, I'm filming today and one of the reasons I'm filming all day today is because Lisa's off work on Thursday. So I'm filming all day today, I'm filming all day tomorrow, I can edit on Thursday. Now I've got, I mean obviously this one will go up, I'll do this one later uh, while I'm uploading other ones but you know the rest of them I can uh, I can edit them on Thursday when she's home and I can't really film but I can still work so that's the that's the logic behind it so I have to be able to plan ahead I have to be able to see but I don't need to plan the entire year ahead I have very few appointments that are um, planned more than about a month ahead I think uh, maybe the dentist occasionally will book six months ahead but invariably they ring up and change it. Invariably. It's, it's just, it always happens. I've been with the same dentist for five years. I book my six monthly appointment and every single time they ring me up the week before and say, sorry, he's going to be on a conference that week. Sorry, he's going to be away that week. Sorry, he's going to be teaching that week. <laughs> Can we move you? Uh, it's become kind of a running joke. She, she now rings me up and says, hi, Claire, I've just, it's the dentist. And I'm just calling to move your appointment for you. <laughs> Uh, so it's, it's quite entertaining. I find it entertaining. It doesn't bother me that she moves it because, you know, they always move it to a, a time that's convenient for you anyway, so rambling. Um, so yeah, my one book July set up, I haven't set up. Yeah, there's that. Um, I've started, this is July, uh, I put a I don't know if it'll show up. Can you see? I've put some washi tape along the edge just so that it stands out and I've put a little tab on it for July. I had one for June as well. Back here. Uh, and I've staggered them. But I haven't made them sta stick out so much that they get in the way of anything. They're just enough that I can find July easily. Uh, at the moment I've got my Ollie clip on there just holding it together and I've got my Leuchtturm uh, grid paper behind it so that I can write on that page. Uh, but that's it, that's all I've done. I haven't set up anything for July. The only thing I'm going to do is on these two pages I'm going to set up my monthly calendar. From there I'm going to make it up as I go along. Because the point of it 
is to get back to basics and to figure out what you really need. And if you tell yourself before you start the challenge, oh, but I must have this and I must have that and I'm going to set it up like this so that I can use it like that, then you're not really going back to basics. You're just using what you're already using. You're just rejigging your system yet again, but only for a month, if that makes sense. Um, I mean, like we all rejig our systems all the time. I know I do. Um, but my basic system, how I plan, um, the premise of it, I book my appointments on my monthly, I work out in advance what days I've got available to work and what days I won't be able to work, and then I fit in my errands and chores in the days that I know I can't work, uh, and then I, you know, I plan my days according to what I need to do first. I just prioritise things. And I usually do that in the form of a bullet journal. That is my basic planning system. And, you know, even though I swap it out to different books all the time, that is still my planning system. And I find a lot of people kind of like to just change things for the sake of changing it. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. But if you approach this challenge as, right, I'm going to set this up in a completely different way, just like I did last month and the month before and the month before and the month before and the month before, then you're not really challenging yourself. If you're in that situation where you found you've just basically just set up your book like you always do, or <clears throat> if you are one of those people who has hit a brick wall where you don't know which of your many different planner versions or notebooks or whatever to use um, I don't mean like oh you can't decide on what colour you want to use this month I mean like seriously you can't decide between like a pocket Filofax and an A6 Hobonichi or whatever um, those are preset planning systems and in a way you're trying to force yourself into somebody else's box if you use a preset planning system I'm not saying there's anything wrong with using a preset planning system if you've got one and you think oh I've never used this I could try it, go ahead, that's fine. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with what you're doing. I'm just trying to help out those people. Like um, Tracy Reinhart, um, if you go and watch her video, you'll see what I mean. She's one of those people that she really cannot decide between which book to use. And she's got so many different reasons why she can't decide. And I'm not saying that's wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. She's just trying to do the challenge in the best way for her, knowing that, you know, she's quite a planner planner aficionado you know she's used a lot of systems she's tried a lot of things she knows what she needs to a certain extent she just can't decide what book she wants to use um, but at the same time my advice to Tracy was why not just get a little blank book and start from there and you know if you decide on the 2nd of July oh I can't function without seeing my weeks in advance you know, print out your monthly calendar or print out your weeks or draw out your weeks or, you know, find a freebie and stick it in or whatever and build your system as you go. And if you get to Thursday and you think, oh, God, I can't function without my daily calendar, then write some daily calendar pages in for a week um, and see how that works. And then, you know, next week you think, well, yeah, I really need my week at a glance. I don't need a notes page, but I do need a daily pe half a page for each day, just for appointments and things. Then you can set that up in advance next week and you can keep tweaking and changing the system as you go through the month according to what you feel you need. And by the end of the month, in theory, you should have a good idea of how much space you really need. To do things because you'll have been fluid about it and you can literally in a blank book you can change it from day to day that's what I like about about a blank book and that's what's um, drawn me to not set up in advance um, I don't have a setup like I say I will have on these first two pages for July right behind my tab let me take this out oh I might sneeze in a minute hay fever's rife today so there's my July page and right behind my tab I will have my calendar for the month that's where my appointments will go now in June I did what everybody else does I set up my calendar and then the first thing I did was said right now I need my weeks with a page for bullet journaling um, 
And then I was sat there the other day and thinking, well, hang on a minute. Yes, this looks pretty. And if you, if that's part of how you journal, then that's great. But if I've got it all written on here, and look at all the blank space I've got on here to be able to write stuff, do I then really need to copy it all out and write it in here as well, just to be able to add some more stuff to it? Is that necessary? So I thought, well, you know, maybe it's not necessary. So I'll start the month with my monthly calendar on these two pages. And I know it needs to be a big calendar. Um, it, it's always got to be a large calendar. I may even do it so that it's um, like... Mm, no, I probably won't actually because July is a funny month. It's a five week month because it starts in the middle of the week. But if it was a four week month like June, I might even have put like what week one, week two, week three, week four. So I've got my month and a glance on four pages. And then I wouldn't have needed to do weeklies as well because it was already in here. Um, but I don't, I don't think I'm going to do that this time. I think I'm just going to stick with the two page spread because honestly that two page spread was more than big enough to fit everything in because of my minuscule writing. I mean I write so tiny I might as well make use of the, the, in the size of box that I've got and take advantage of the fact that I write small. So I haven't set anything up at all. Now if I get to next week and I think oh you know what I really need my week at a glance then I'll put a week at a glance in. Or if I, you know, I get to Monday and I, oh, I need a week at a glance, <laughs> I'm going to go mad, then I will do it. But my work folder, I've just pulled my whole system together for work because I was using several different planners for different things. Like I had one for YouTube, one for class notes, one for admin, one for general work and correspondence and ideas and stuff like that. Um, I had another notebook for... Um, doing class uh, lessons in uh, and I've just pulled the majority of it together so that I'm I've got it all in one A5 file of facts I've upgraded ow I'm being bitten ow 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 midges um, one A5 file of facts so I've upgraded from a personal to an A5 and I've put all of the A5 like my YouTube personal planner and my class personal planner and all that kind of stuff is all now in my A5 file effects. It just makes more sense to have it all in one binder, especially now that we're halfway through the year. I've just taken out January to June and put June, July to uh, December in and I've used the coils from the personal planners to put January to June all together. So it's like an archive uh, and I've kept the spiral bound from the other one so that I can put that in and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and the covers from the personal planners I've used as dividers for my A5 file effects. I'll talk about my work system another time because I've again I've had a lot of people ask about that. Uh, thank you to all the people asking for videos. By the way, I, I I've got so many ideas for videos, and it gets really it gets to the point where I have so many ideas I never get anything done. <laughs> so you know the fact that I now know that a lot of people wanted to see the review of Susie Blue's book, which is coming later this week. A lot of people want to see my A5 file effects set up for work. A lot of people are interested in One Book July and how I'm doing that. Um, a lot of people like to see my journal with me videos. Um, that's really helpful to me because if you tell me what you like to see, I can make more of it. It's quite simple, really, you know. Um, and I can, you know, where I've had a, a brain fart and come up with some crazy idea and said do you want to see this and you know I might record it anyway and say you interested in these kind of videos and if you say no then that's okay you know I might still do them because I enjoy doing them or not I don't know Ooh, I'm getting, it's getting really hot I have to go in soon because it's the sun's starting to come up above and it's getting a bit burny anyway that is my one book July setup I'm going to have a monthly calendar and that's it. I will set up the rest as and when I feel I need it throughout the month. And my one pen is going to be a basic blue biro. Now the reason I've chosen blue, like I said, I was using this pen the other day. I really liked the colour and I really liked how it wrote and I just really, it, I took to it. Um, I'm sure in a week I'll be bored with it, but I don't normally use blue. I usually use black with lots of different colours and I just thought, well, it would be a change, you know. My system is so simple 
already that really one book july is not that big of a challenge for me i do have lots of journals but it's no big deal to me to just say oh well i'll only use this one um if you go and watch anna brim's um video over on mrs bremble's she says a similar thing you know it's not she has lots of planners and lots of journals because she likes having lots of planners and lots of journals uh, same with vicky she likes having lots of different planners and lots of different journals it's her hobby it's what she likes to do um, she doesn't have lots of different planners because she has to have lots of different planners because she's you know trying to get organized or trying to do this or trying to do that she just has lots of different planners and likes to use them for lots of different things you know i'm very much the same i've got lots of filofaxes and lots of journals and i use them because i want to not because i have to or because i'm trying to find some kind of inner peace or something i've got my system this is my system uh, it doesn't really matter where I do it, whether it's in my Midori or a blank book or a Filofax or whatever, it translates. Did I go on a sidetrack? I think I did. It's getting too hot, I can't think. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, yeah, the challenge is not much of a challenge for me, so I thought, well, you know what, I'm going to go with a blue pen, because I don't normally use a blue pen. And I also have... Oof! Cranky, it's really hot. I'm gonna have to go indoors in a minute, it's too hot for me out here. Uh, I have a mix of stamps. I've got several of these sets of schedule stamps, and I have the ones, the eight that I use most, um, which is uh, shopping, sunny, rainy, the paw print for the dogs, movies, don't forget, a cup of coffee, and the date stamp. So that's what I've got there. I've got a pink highlighter tape runner. I've got a glue, glue tape runner. I'm going to try and find a smaller one like this so it fits in my bag better. But this is the one I've got at the moment. And then I've got... Um, at the moment I've got a black versus colour. I want to go and get a different colour because this elephant stamp is a, a solid colour and I can't use it in black because what I like to do is use the elephant for don't forgets. You know, because elephants never forget, do they? But I don't have any other colour versus colour chalks. So I'm going to have to go and get a new one in a different colour. So, yeah, my elephant stamp. And then I've also got in here... This is the... This is a zip pouch that came with a book in it originally. It's the Zip It book pouch. Um, this is a book... This is a zip wallet. And then inside it's got two wallet things where two flaps where the book slid into um, but I use it for I've, I've just got my like my diary stickers I've got one set of diary stickers in here I've got uh, some other odd bits and pieces that I'm enjoying using at the moment like I've got my these are the stickers that Anna Bremble sent in one of the boxes but I'm really enjoying the very summary I've got the little people from the Hobonichi paper that if you've got hope in each at the beginning of the year you'll know what I mean I've got on this side uh, one of these little hope pouches and in there I've got one card with six washi tapes on in different colors I've got uh, my pink and green post-it notes which is the ones I use the most my through four Hobonichi stencils that I use for my bullet journaling and then I've just got some random bits of stickers and things that I've been using on and off and my moleskin stickers you know I love my moleskin stickers um, my highlight stickers I thought those would be useful since I don't really have a highlighter other than the pink one um, and then I've also got these tabs which are the tabs that I'm using for my dates and my pages and things. I thought I'd better put those in just because I'll probably need more of those as we go along. Because it's quite a thick book. I don't really want to have page flags sticking out all the, over the place, but I will probably want to mark where things are. Hence the washi tape as well. I probably won't use the washi tape for decorating or anything like that. I don't tend to do that. Except to like jazz up a page if it's all writing or something like that. Um, this bit of paper is just my contact details for Lisa, so it's not—it's just something I need to carry with me. It's not something 
for my planner particularly. I just don't want to write it all out again and put it in my book. Uh, and then in the front here I've just got various odd bits and pieces of you know, bits of diary stickers that are left. Um, bits of I've got some pre-printed I printed some pre-print there I stamped some <laughs> pre-made labels and cut them up so I've got things I've got headers like top 10 lists and my notes and today's the day and events and um, don't forget and to-do list and things like that I just thought they'd be handy they're just sitting around doing nothing so I thought I'd put them in here and I can use those to jazz up my book when I feel like I'm getting a bit bored with it just being blue I've got a couple of random stamps, I just picked like half a dozen at random that I can just use in my book to, you know, so to break up the writing basically because I hate seeing when I've written like eight pages and there's nothing else I kind of like to break it up a little bit with like a bit of washi tape or a stamp or something just to make it decorative um, but that's it, that's my, that's my stuff and I probably won't be carrying this about because most of it most of it doesn't fit in my bag so I'll probably only take these with me and I'll have the rest at home for as and when I need it. Look this is how hot it is, my Versamark is sweating under the sun. I think it's time to turn off and go inside because it's too hot. Even the dogs are going inside. <laughs> so yeah I think it's time to go inside. I will update you um, later in the week with what I'm doing with my One Book July how it's going, what I'm doing, I'll follow me on Instagram at Romany. Uh, I'll be putting up my pages up there as and when I do them. Uh, bear in mind that I don't always journal um, daily. I don't have a set, I do a page every day. Sometimes I just make notes, sometimes I just write a couple of sentences, sometimes I doodle a picture, sometimes I go back and fill in a space that was already there. Uh, other times I write 12 pages without stopping sometimes I draw you know I do all sorts of things in my book and the great thing about One Book July is that you'll get to see all that in one place um, so I'll be able to I'll be able to show you all in one place the amount of stuff that I do in a month because sometimes when you journal if you don't do it all in one book uh, it can be very difficult to judge how much you do um, and you can sometimes feel like you're not journaling enough or you're not doing it often enough or you're not you know you can feel guilty for, oh, I'm not doing my scrapbooking, or I'm not putting my photos in there, and this, that, and the other, um, if you can't see it all in one place. So I suppose this would be a good gauge for that, won't it? Because, you know, can I fill up all those pages? It's about 250 pages now, I think. 500 sides. I doubt very much I can fill that much up in a month, but we'll give it a go. And just as a aside at the back here, I just put in a couple of pages back. I've just put in a red washi with a, a red tab. And that's my YouTube. I'm going to do my YouTube lists in there because I don't want my YouTube lists in my work planner because everything in my work planner is to do with classes and admin and running my classes and teaching and all that kind of stuff. It's not to do with YouTube. So I've put my YouTube in here because I kind of class my YouTube as a hobby part of my job. It's the bit that I well I enjoy all my job but YouTube is the bit that I don't really need to plan I can just you know write a list and go oh which video do I want to record today and off I go whereas my classes I have to plan them in advance I have to work out learning objectives all that kind of stuff it's very in-depth whereas a YouTube video yeah I just write a list of what I want to do and off I go anyway I'm going to take my oh my god I'm so hot Oh, I'm going to take what's left of my iced coffee and I'm going to go indoors because it's, it's too hot. <laughs> I can't take the heat anymore. Don't forget to come and join us on facebook.com One Book July. Follow Miss Vicky B, myself and Carrie Harling on YouTube, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram. Uh, if you go to Facebook, uh, because it's a page, it's open to anybody even if you don't have Facebook and there is a post in there that's got all the links so you can, all the tag links so if you're not used to using Tumblr and you don't really understand what it is, it's fine. You can just click on the link for Tumblr and it'll show you all the One Book July posts. So it, I've made it as simple as I can for those of you who don't use Facebook. Um, and obviously if you do use Facebook and you want to post, you want to share your stuff, or if you want to sign up for Facebook just once without adding any friends or anything like that, um, just so that you can post on the Facebook page, that's absolutely fine. 
uh, I have no objection to that as long as you're posting on Book July stuff. So if you don't normally do social media and you'd just like to join in on this one thing, do come and do that. That's fine. Ah, uh, yeah, I think it's time to go in. The dogs have gone inside, so you know what they say about hot weather, mad dogs and Englishmen. Time to exit the sun. I'll see you later. Bye. <laughs>